Welcome to season one, two, three, four, five of Meet the Drapers, the world's largest international business plan competition. We're going global. We traveled the globe scouring the US, India, Taiwan, Portugal, Canada, and Brazil for their best and brightest entrepreneurs. This is amazing. Every week, these entrepreneurs will compete against their countrymen for a chance to make it to our international semifinals and then on to finals to compete for a $1 million investment from Tim Draper himself. The crystal ball ultimately chooses. But here's the twist. Your favorite business eliminated too early? Vote them back into the finale to get a second chance in front of judges Tim. This could be quite a thing. Holly. It's kind of exciting to people. And Bill Draper. That's a real plus in this case. As well as their VIP guest judges. Let the games begin. We're funding heroes. Heroes. Future shape. Everybody, back in your hey. seats. Hey, welcome to Meet the Drapers. This is our fifth season, and we are so excited. This is the biggest audience we've ever had. This is our Entrepreneurathon. We're going around the world, finding entrepreneurs from all over the world. Every session, we're going to interview entrepreneurs, and one will win. And that winner will get $50,000 investment. They will move forward to the semifinals. And then of the semifinalists, we will choose three winners. And you, the audience, will choose the other three finalists. And those six finalists will be up against each other in the big finale. And the winner will get a million dollar investment. It's the big Olympics of entrepreneurship and venture capital, and we are so excited to have you be a part of it. We have Bill Draper here, chairman of the Export-Import Bank, one of the pioneers of venture capital in the Silicon Valley. He was the first venture capitalist in India, and he's my dad. He is here with a very special guest. We have Bismarck. Bismarck is a dachshund with great judgment. He is gonna use his great judgment and we also have Polly Draper, my sister, who saved my life. And she is an actress, producer, director. Uh, writer. Writer. Yeah, thanks, writer. <laughs> of, NFT. Uh, and, and, and now an <laughs> NFT. We have here with us a very special guest, Gina Close a Tony Robbins acolyte, an innovator. She has done extraordinary things around the world. She's an NFT. She's a one of, there is no other Gina Close. And welcome to our show, Gina. Woo! Great Thank to you have so much. you. And she gets everybody around her dancing. Let's do this, game on. Game on. Game All on, right. baby, game on. Let's do this. <laughs> Gina, what kinds of things are you gonna be looking for in judging these entrepreneurs? Uh, well, 80% of success is energy, grit, mindset and doing what it takes to lead. Let's bring on that first entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scene. My name is Dylan. I'm Mitchell and we're the co-founders of Respira. We're from Toronto, Canada, and we do biological air filtration. I was in high school and that's when I first started learning about climate change and the issues going on with the environment. And it freaked me out. The next thing I thought was, oh, but you know what? There's so many people out there. There's so many scientists. Someone's going to figure it out and this will all be fine. But the next thought I had was, what if everyone's thinking that? And in that moment, I made a decision that I was going to be part of that solution to fix uh, the environmental issues that exist right now. And fast forward 10 years and here we are. What we're looking to do is provide proximity to clean fresh air. You don't have to go out into a five-day nature hike to actually get that experience of nature. 
Uh, you also don't have to dispose a bunch of filters collecting the pollutants that exist in cities to also get that clean, fresh air. What we want to do is give people access to nature and clean air. Our entrepreneurs today are all from Canada. And this first group is called Respira. Oh, but before you do. Oh, you know, let's let's see your dance moves. Dance moves? Yeah, dance Acapella? moves. Let's see what you got. Come on. Acapella. Acapella. We're <laughs> building heroes. Hey, hey. Heroes. <laughs> That's the way oh. to go. Oh, I'm liking Come this. On, let's see. Okay, it's good. Very good. Oh, oh, I, okay, okay we got good. it. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, now <laughs> give us your pitch. All right, let's hear it. You're breaking the tension like that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dylan. I'm Mitchell. And we're the co-founders of Respira. I'd like to begin today by asking you a question. What was the most important thing you did for your health today? Breathe. 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 <laughs> Take a shower. Eat breakfast. I slept. I took a little nap in the car. I meditated and then I also, at the end of my shower, turned it on really cold. We obviously have some very healthy people here, and Tim, Bill, you hit it right on the head, and mindfulness and sleep, they're all very important. When we focus on our health, we focus on what we can do for our bodies from sleep to exercise, as well as what we put inside of our bodies. Yet oftentimes, we often don't think about what we consume most, something essential for life. Today, we are extremely excited to be here with you because we have the solution to a real world problem, the air we breathe. I would argue that humans have become an indoor species. We spend 90% of our time inside. Of the buildings we spend our time inside of, they consume 30% of their total energy, improving air quality by way of ventilation. Indoor air quality is five times worse than outdoor air. With the myriad of solutions that exist in the marketplace today, we're doing more harm than good, producing 12,000 tons of disposable filter waste on an annual basis alone. Our company's mission is to improve the health of the built environment through a connection to nature and improved indoor air quality, I present to you Respira. Biological air filtration for the home and office coming in the form of two different products. The first, a novel living wall biofilter made fresh from plants, removing 97% of toxins in the air we breathe and third party tested to do so. This is a fully automated smart garden that comes with a companion app so you can control the system from your phone and check on plant health as well as air quality. On the commercial side, we have right here beside Bill, Respira Pro. And this is the product that we've always dreamed of for three reasons. The first is as you can see, it's modular, making it very scalable. Secondly to that, we have the automation and the data collection. We're collecting air quality data and plant health data to improve the health of the built environment through plants. And then finally, the kicker, the utility patent on this product allows us to directly integrate into the HVAC system of a building, thereby improving its air quality and reducing ventilation. This results in cost savings for the building owner. Digging into the numbers behind our most uh, recent growth year, we jumped on Kickstarter with our retail product, Respira Home, and in 30 days, we moved $240,000 worth of inventory. In addition to our $611,000 in revenue last year, we received $700,000 in non-dilutive government funding for tech development and employees. We grew by 263% last year, pre-selling a product during a pandemic. This year we're poised and focused with our forecast to grow by 400%. And so Drapers, Gina, we ask you to join us in planting the seeds for the next generation of clean air technology. Thank you. So you're gonna put these into all these places, but plants have a way of finding, growing in weird and unusual ways and kind of taking over an office or dying. Yeah. How do you control that? Do you recommend they prune it? Pruning is really the main requirement in addition to adding water to the system every two weeks. And that's on the retail side. On the business side, commercial side, uh, we offer a maintenance program. So our teams go through the offices and we take care of these living walls. What do you charge for this? What? This system here is $1149.96, the way you see it currently. So the unit itself, is $849.99. The LED light is an accessory as well as the stainless uh, steel floor stand. How do we know it works? Yeah. We've done third-party research uh, with Ryerson University in Toronto, Ontario, where we're from, and we tested first our removal efficiency, so that is passing air through the system and showcasing how fast we can remove the toxins and at what rate. Now, so why wouldn't we just use a carbon filter? 
Long term, it would be more expensive to continuously buy and throw away these carbon filters. The plastic particles that are in the ocean are now in the air. Yeah. And we're breathing those. I was reading an article the other day about it. If we're breathing in plastic particles. How do these work and removing the plastic from the air? So one uh, major unknown for us right now is the removal of particulates. Mm. Uh, our main focus has been on gases, those volatile compounds that are more directly associated with health concerns. What we are focused on are VOCs because what we're looking to do is reduce the air change schedule or ventilation in a building. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is by focusing on volatile organic compounds. There's a formula called IAQP, the Indoor Air Quality Procedure, that actually dictates how often you have to ventilate a space. In our tests, what we've been focusing on are VOCs because if we can reduce the amount of VOCs in a building, then we can actually reduce the amount of air changes in a building and that results in energy savings for the building. And what's your profit margin? On this product here, it's 60%. On this product here, it's 70%. When you sell these, where do you get the plants? Like if you keep growing really big, yeah. where do the plants come from? We have our own greenhouse locally, uh -huh. where we are. So we lease that space and we grow our own plants. And then what's really key for us is we've already established our supply chain. That's not an investment we have to make anymore. We're getting product from China. We're thinking about moving our manufacturing to North America with the year we've had with logistics. Yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dylan and Mitchell. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tim. Thanks for bringing us Respira. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. Thanks for being on Meet the Drapers. And we'll have to put one of these things in here and see how it cleans the air. Absolutely. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks. Nice to meet you. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X, and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play. You can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies. And if your company goes and becomes a Semi-finalists, you get 5x on your money. If in the semi-finals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5x on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10x on your money. Because so we're gonna have a leaderboard and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers. So, what did everybody think of Respira? What did you think out there in the audience? What did Bismarck think? <laughs> Bismarck uh, is quite quiet on this one, but uh, he pees on the, these guys sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of money with the Canadians, and I've been very active in Canada, and I love the Canadians, and I would buy one of these, I would pay $1,100 to get fresh air. Gina, what'd you think? I think it's cute, it's a novelty. I think it's a novelty. There's a lot of competition in this space. I love it, I love the idea of fresh air. I just think there's a lot, of, it's a very crowded space. Yeah. Polly, what'd you think? I wanted no one to say anything bad about it because <laughs> didn't tell me that it's a crowded space because I love the idea. I also love these pictures of people designing their entire office wall with this. I started thinking of the reality of how I am with plants and how they about all two weeks would go by go and, by no and I, there'd be no water. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a thousand dollars down the drain instantly. Anyway, I really love these two guys. Was terrified by the, the the thought that right what they said at the beginning, and that is that humans are an indoor species, and I think that that's become true and we really do have to take note of that and do something about the fact that the air quality is terrible inside. Yeah, it's a nice design too. With it's a, beautiful. With the light, the yeah. light that the plants all it's grow beautiful. to. So let's hear from our next entrepreneur. But before we bring him on, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. My name is Amol Karnick. I'm the president and CEO of KA Imaging and one of the founders. I'm from Toronto, Canada. So our vision as a company is to do innovative x-ray everywhere. We founded the company with a social entrepreneurship mission. 
that allows it because we really wanted to improve the lives of people not just in you know high resource countries but in also the capability low resource countries where you know they don't have the access to medical imaging we wanted to make it accessible affordable but also improve diagnostic quality as compared to what's already out there let's hear from our next entrepreneur we have ka imaging so amal we're going to hear your pitch but first Gina has a question. I look for passion, excitement, energy. So are you ready? Absolutely. Are you ready? Great, let's see your dance moves. Come on, baby. What kind of dance? You want some salsa? Do you want some? Oh, dance? look at you. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, boy. Oh, he didn't, oh, even he didn't even have to hesitate. You the right guy. Wow. All right. Didn't even All right. hesitate. All right. You got to love that. So go ahead and uh, let's hear your pitch. Our vision is to do innovative x-ray everywhere. So. We created Color X-Ray. So you may ask, why? You know, X-Ray's been around 120 years. It's the number one used medical imaging modality. But did you know X-Ray can be inadequate? It can miss things. It's not very good at differentiating materials and tissue types. It's very difficult to see lines and tubes, pneumothorax, you know, pneumonias. So what we've done is revolutionized X-Ray and we've created Color X-Ray. Like your eye can see three colors, and create this amazing color world, we've created an X-ray detector that can split the X-ray spectrum into three different energy buckets. That allows us now to separate soft tissue and bone. And as patients, that will improve the diagnostic quality and lead to better patient outcomes. We're approved for sale in seven jurisdictions globally. We have our US FDA 510K. We're portable. Not only can we be used anywhere in the hospital, but we can be used anywhere in the world, in the rural parts of the world, and improve diagnostic capabilities globally. We've got 80 global patents in the company, 500,000 systems installed globally. We can upgrade them all. We can upgrade them all to all have color X-ray by just changing the X-ray camera, the receiving part. We did a healthcare economic study and showed that we can improve the financial bottom line of a hospital by three and a half million dollars in the first five years. We've got multiple global installs. We've imaged over a thousand patients. We've got $13 million in our sales pipeline. How, wait, how do you improve their bottom line? They buy this equipment. Yes. Are you saying this will save people money where they no longer have to do a CT so or a PET there's, scan? So we say we optimize the CT use because some cases will reduce, but now you'll be able to detect more. Now when, when you see it in color, can you change the colors and move them around so Absolutely. that you're actually seeing different kind of, kinds of things with the same x-ray? Absolutely. You're seeing different kinds of things. Absolutely. So radiologists are used to seeing black and white images. What we're doing is separating the soft tissue and the bone. The image that you can see here with the colorization is superimposing them on top of each other. But to start, we're gonna allow them to visualize each independently. It would be good for us to see how it's now and how it's changed. If you look at the separations, these actually disappear in this image here. They reappear clearly. So now you know these are calcified nodules. You can also see this line very clearly as part of that pacemaker. You've already raised $10 million. Correct. And you've got $13 million in a sales pipeline. We are raising the next round of $25 million to focus on the commercialization to really allow us to execute on that $13 million in the pipeline. And the $2 million that you've sold, is that direct to hospitals? Are they it's buying It's been through hospitals things? and our distributors as well. Do you have a sense for how much they like it? Oh, we've been getting great feedback. You know, one of our sites internationally, they've done 800 patients. They've been talking to investors on our behalf. We've got sites that are helping say, you know, this is, this is fantastic. Where one of the lead technologists at one of our sites was talking to our, uh, one of our potential investors, and they said, look, you know, we, we took our regular x-ray system up to the patient. I couldn't find one of the tubes I was looking for. So I went down and got the KA detector, brought it back, and I could see exactly what I needed. And, and is this hardware and software? Is it's a hardware-software combination. We need to change their x-ray detector, but we also have our own software that does the processing that you can see. Are you selling the, the hardware and the software, or are you selling a per shot? Uh, hardware and software independently. But you don't pay, people don't no, we pay don't, we per... No, we don't do a pay-per-click, no. 
Why not? That seems it's, like it's a, a good business model. It would be, but it's a burden on hospitals. They, you know, they actually have been pushing back. When you look at so what's happening in some of the AI world and the radiology world in AI, that pay-per-click model is just not taking off as well as What's like. your margin on this? It's about 60%, 70%. How many do you have on your team? We have about 30 people right now. And we'd like to double by end of this year uh, by bringing a lot of sales teams. Is this a standalone unit? So for medical care worldwide, for places that may not have access to x-ray machines, could you just bring this in? Absolutely. So we're actually working with some rural parts in like Philippines right now and Pakistan and other parts of the world where we can just take this detector and improve the, the healthcare outcomes. And I was noticing in the images is it older school slides that go in or is it digital? So it is now digital, like your camera went okay. from film to digital. Same thing happened to the x-ray as well. So all these are digital detectors as well. What is this price compared to a traditional x-ray? So we're at the higher end of the market. So most x-ray detectors sell at the hospital level from forty to $80,000. We're pricing ourselves either as a capital purchase at the high end of that or as a hardware as a service model at the low end of that. Mm -hmm. Right here, what we've done, every standard x-ray has one of these lines in here. It's, it, it's the actual receiving component that converts x-ray to an image. That receiving component, we've made three of them. So we've got also three times the hardware in here as compared to a standard x-ray And each one is a different color? In a way, it filters each one. It doesn't work quite as well as we think of colors, but they actually separate the energy spectrum as it comes into the x-ray detector. Terrific. Well, Amal, yeah. thank, thank you. you so much for being thank a you. part of Meet the thank Drapers. You. It's yeah, great to you. have you. This is really terrific. Thank you. You're an amazing dancer. <laughs> that was good a salsa. revelation. Right. Pretty good salsa. I got to my wife as well. She's from Venezuela. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thanks, Thanks thank very you. much. Thanks. Bye-bye. So what did everybody think of KA Imaging? What did you think of it? Well, we're not going to hear your answer. But actually, online, maybe you can. Maybe you tweet me, you know, Tim, at Tim Draper. Tweet me. Tell me what you think. <laughs> anyway, let's ask our judges. Polly, what did you think of KA Images? Uh, I got a lot of PTSD looking at that rib cage. I think that anything that gives more complexity to x-rays is a great idea. I just wonder how you get that into the market. It's hard to get any kind of medical thing passed. He's, he's passed that point, though. He's got FDA approval. Oh, he has FDA he approval. Has I didn't hear. He has two him million in sales, he and he's Canadian. and he's got a 13 million sales pipeline. So he's oh, then, off to the race. Then it's, I think, nothing but great. Gina, what did you think? I think it's great technology. It's innovative. My question is, they can get the same results with a CAT scan and an X-ray. He's off to the races. I was concerned about that he wasn't as willing to fight the hospitals and get the per click yes. money. And I think that that is probably management weakness. Right. But he sure has a great product. He does. I'm, I'm very excited about it. 80 was, patents, he's ready to he roll. He doesn't replace, he seemed to think he might be able to replace the CT scan. Which I think he uh, knew his subject very well. I thought his presentation was excellent. but. I, uh, judging just from his presentation, I thought it was excellent. I'm all for it. Terrific. Okay, so <laughs> moving on, we've got another entrepreneur coming for you Whoa. from Canada. But before we bring him on, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Hi, I'm Taylor, the CEO of Chimera XR. I was in New Brunswick when there was a shooting that happened in the town next to, to where I was staying with the military and the RCMP officers, the military, uh, sorry, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police officers and had to rush out and deal with this active shooter response and ended up leaving several officers dead and injured, seeing that some of them didn't, you know, successfully come out of that situation and that the inquiry that resulted showed the lack of training, you know, it, it really hit home for me that access to training is a real problem. I saw this as a viable solution and wholeheartedly started investigating and, and trying to research how it could be that it could work. Have done prototyping and testing for three years with all kinds of law enforcement agencies and finally determined that this is this is the product that's required. So, you know, coming from 
instructor backgrounds to help other instructors and end users. This is, this is near and dear to our hearts. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tim Draper. If you got a great idea, go ahead and send it to me. And who knows, you might be the next big contestant. We'll be right back after this. So let's hear from our next entrepreneur. This is Chimera XR, and we're gonna hear from Taylor. And Taylor, you're gonna give us a pitch, but before you do. Welcome, you look fabulous there in Mississippi, and we need to pump up some energy around here. So here's your first instruction. Let's see you dance it up right now. Show us your best dance move. Ah, go! Go for it. Come on. <laughs> Oh, very good. <laughs> Perfect. Woo! Whoa. That's what I'm Whoa. thinking about. Taylor, you rose to the occasion. Oh, very good. I'm ready. Okay, so Taylor, give us the pitch. What's Chimera XR? Thank you so much for your time and for having me on. I'm Taylor. I'm the CEO of Chimera XR, and we help law enforcement train anywhere, anytime using virtual reality. So we've all seen law enforcement recently come under un increasing scrutiny for public use of force. Law enforcement typically trains these kinds of use of force incidents using simulation. However, simulation hasn't evolved in 25 years. So what we're trying to do is use virtual reality as a means to train some of these high risk scenarios and help law enforcement access training anywhere they need it, anytime. Our hardware is the same as the firearms and use of force tools that they use on the job day to day and our system is the easiest to use and the quickest to set up with only two minutes required to get up and running, which is the first in the simulation industry. Our software is built for high stress scenario training and has the most realistic ballistics in the industry. And we're priding ourselves on that because most law enforcement engagements happen around vehicles, 80% or more. And that means that we need to train with the real thing as much as possible. So we've built our vehicle ballistics and our structural ballistics to match reality. We saw the VR headsets and then we saw guns in their hands. Is that a part of your product? And they work together and does the gun have a have a kick to it? Yes, we have recoiling and non-recoiling options depending on what our clients prefer. So the software that we designed, uh, we're working on the de-escalation portion now. So specifically, most of our clients are national agencies, which of which we have six in three countries, as well as smaller agencies, we have a grander vision for where simulation as a whole needs to progress to help our law enforcement and military members. And we call this intelligent coaching. This system that we're creating is intelligently listening to what the student is doing in the headset, providing feedback from an algorithmic point of view on what the student's performance is. The instructor control which pieces of the algorithm are active when, and the student gets progressed from point A to point B through the curriculum the instructor set up even though the instructor isn't in the room. The instructor still has full control and at the end of the day can see what happened with the student, but this allows more agencies to get more access to training and those students show up on their next class better prepared. Terrific, are you law enforcement or military? Military, 15 years. And what made you decide this is the thing you needed to do? So in my last full-time job in the military, I just retired. I spent my days running firearms and tactics classes and using the traditional methods like the classroom and the live range, but also simulation. And I found the existing forms of simulation were lacking. They didn't create immersion, essentially it's a screen that you project an image onto. And law enforcement have the hardest job, the least resources, the least people. And so I saw this opportunity where simulation could fill that gap and give better access to technology, but not with the existing tech stack. So I looked and saw VR in 2017 is just starting to take off. And so I started to explore and do R&D and three years later found product market fit. And how do you make money and who's your customer? Right, so our systems are sold as a package. We have national and local agencies as well as private training companies that use the system to drive curriculum, allow remote learning to happen. Um, and our software and hardware sell as a bundle. How much do you sell it for? 20,000 is the base price at, at a margin of 86%. And who are you selling it to? We sell direct to police departments as well as military agencies and on occasion to certain training institutions as well. And statistically, has it been around enough for you to know if it's had success? That's definitely a very hard thing to measure and we're still early. So I can't say we've measured that. I think the main thing, and no company in the industry can say they've measured that I, to my knowledge. So the main thing that we can say is 
we've increased the access to training for law enforcement members. And that's the critical goal. How many have you sold? So to date, we've sold uh, 15 units to 12 agencies. What's that in revenues? 235,000. And how long have you been in business? We've been in business just over a year. We launched in February with a, a pre-seed round kicking it off, and we're currently raising a seed round as well. What rank were you at the, in the military? I was a sergeant in the infantry, and then I transitioned to an intelligence role and, and actually dropped down a couple ranks to do that, to try something new just on my way out. So I actually ended as a corporal, technically. Taylor, thank you for your 15 years of service, and it seems like that's a, a long period of time that you've been in that. And now you're entering Silicon Valley, and, and you're here with a group of extraordinary entrepreneurs. Aside from the entrepreneurs in this room, who do you model and why? So there's a, a gentleman named Dan Martell, who I learned from a couple times through some accelerators in, in our area, in, in the Toronto area. There's an accelerator called 1855 Whitby. Uh, it's a wonderful institution started by um, some, some excellent folks in that area. Dan Martell being a, a SaaS expert, a software as a service expert, he go, guided me and coached me in the early stages of discovering how to do this business. I'm still learning a lot and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to making new connections. I've never experienced any of Silicon Valley, so I'm excited to meet and learn about you know what, what else is out there too. And why are you the guy to do this? Why are you a wow? I think the main reason is that, so I've seen it from the military and end user perspective, and I've seen it um, from the technology perspective and seeing where they could meet. I think a lot of our competitors only have seen it from the software perspective and they miss a lot of the ground truths. So even for example, on Monday, I was doing a demonstration at a federal agency head to head with two of our competitors. And some of the feedback I got from that agency was that we have the strongest connection to what the end user use case is, and we speak more directly to what they need. How does your price compare to your competitors? We are the least costly option on the market. We have the simplest hardware. A lot of our competitors require computers and cameras to run the tracking in the system. Uh, we don't. We use an inside out tracked headset, the Oculus Quest 2. So our price point at 20,000 is less than all of our competitors. So they're using VR and do they also have their own weapons for the VR experience? They do. However, they typically don't have the ability to reload those weapons. The weapons don't have full functionality. They focused on the software and not the, you know, the hardware, for example. Is it primarily just guns? You'll forgive me. Is yeah. it like, what are their weapons like? So we have the taser. Yeah, we have less lethal options, use to force tools that law enforcement use like tasers, baton, pepper spray. But of course, in the military context, there's lots of things that go bang. Uh, but for now, we've been focusing on the core items, which are handguns, rifles, tasers. You also have a de-escalation uh, software package in the VR. You're immersed in a scenario. Um, there, there are several scenarios where you get a brief, you get some kind of radio call. This is the, the scene you're showing up to, just like in, in reality. These scenarios are written by law enforcement advisors for us. Who else do you have working with you? How, how big is your team and who are they? We have a, a team of six right now. So we have our software developers, uh, three of them. We have a, a specific engineer who works on our hardware and then Derek and myself. So Derek and I both come from the simulation background in the military. Derek has a, a great business background as well, which it balances us out really well. He handles all of the financial and operation side of things. I handle the product and the, the sales side of things primarily. Um, and we're looking to grow. That's why we're raising right now. And what's preventing someone just to copycat you? For sure. So we have provisional patents on some pieces of our technology. And the main thing that's the blocker for anyone to try to copy us is that it's a lot of very specialized work and expert knowledge that's required. Taylor, thank you so much for being on Meet the Drapers. I'll give you a high five. Um, thank you, sir. And, and for bringing Chimera XR to us. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the time. So what did everybody think of Chimera XR? Gina, what did you think? Well, he has specialty expertise. He knows the game very well. He seems dedicated. I liked him. Passion. He, he danced up a storm, too. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what do you think? I thought he was outstanding. He's the best entrepreneur I've seen. He's got the energy, the drive, the personality. He knows his subject. I, I was glad to, to see that part of his 
package was de-escalation. I understand that everybody needs to be trained to the best of their ability. I'm <laughs> concerned about the market size and that he's already got competitors doing the same VR stuff that he's doing. He was quite impressive. Yeah. Now we've seen great entrepreneurs. We've got Chimera XR, who you just saw. You saw Respira, the plants that will come into your office and clean the air and make your life much cleaner and clearer. You saw KA Imaging, the multi-dimensional x-ray machine that allows x-rays to be seen in color. Well, let's bring on the entrepreneurs. And then we'll, of course, uh, go to the crystal ball for a final decision. Is Bismarck getting a vote? <laughs> he's voting whatever I vote. <laughs> well, he's a celebrity, so he kind of... So, welcome back. Now it is the time, the final decision has to be made. Who's going to move on to the semifinals? Well, Respira, you guys brought us fresh air, and it was a wonderful thing. We're a little concerned about competition. We're a little concerned that there are a lot of people that can do this, but we really like your entrepreneurial energy. In fact, all the way across, this group of entrepreneurs had incredibly good energy. And maybe it's because Gina's here, mm -hmm. or maybe you're just great entrepreneurial energy people. KA Imaging, really excited about the idea of maybe not having to do a CAT scan, maybe being able to do it this way. A little concern that I had was about how tough you'll be when you're dealing with the hospitals, where why not ask for a per shot piece of money from them? I mean, that's a big opportunity. And Chimera XR, wow, you really are an amazing entrepreneur. And it's interesting watching you make a transition from military to business. A lot of people have a lot of difficulty with that. Our concern with you is, is that marketplace big enough to accommodate all those competitors? So we've got to go to the, the crystal ball and figure out what the crystal ball is telling us. It is very difficult. Will it be Respira? Will it be KA Imaging? Or will it be Chimera X XR? Who's going to move forward and get on to our semifinals? and who's gonna get the $50,000 investment. Going straight to big decision maker, we might go to the dog. We've had a lot of good success with the crystal ball. We're feeling it. Oh, oh, it's coming through very clearly. Is it plant-based? Is it, uh, are we seeing images here? Is there VR, VR training system? It is. K.A. K.A., congratulations, and thank you all for being on Meet the Drapers. Yay. Let's hit it. Meet the Drapers. All right. <laughs> thank you. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is fantastic, excited to win. This is amazing for us to win this series and go to the next semifinals. I'm always looking to do things better. And you know, this was a great uh, nerves, probably got me a bit on the show as well. So now the second time around, I'll hopefully be a little calmer and allow me to take my game up a level. We're funding heroes, heroes, future Different places, different lives. We all run different races, different minds, yeah. We keep promoting freedom through every twist and turn. We'll start a revolution and watch the old ways burn. the 
future with our tech. AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best. We'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way. We'll change the world for better. Meet the Draper.